For 160 million years, marine reptiles like Mosasaurus and Plesiosaurs ruled every ocean, crushing prey with jaws strong enough to snap a car and growing longer than a bus. Yet while dinosaurs left their bones on land, these giants vanished from the seas in less than 48 hours. What could erase over a hundred unstoppable species overnight? The real answer is buried in a razor-thin, iridium-rich layer at the bottom of the ocean. It's here the fossil record reveals how evolution, at its peak, engineered the deadliest mistake in history. Their perfection became a trap. The ocean floor doesn't just show their dominance. It documents the exact moment perfection died. But how did the ultimate predators lose everything in a single day? And what did fish have that they didn't? Mosasaurs patrolled the ancient oceans with jaws lined in six-inch teeth and skulls built to crush bone, shell, and anything else unlucky enough to cross their path. Some of these giants stretched over 50 feet, rivaling the length of a city bus. Fossils pulled from the phosphate mines of Morocco and the chalk beds of Kansas reveal their reach was global. In both places, the bones are so dense in the rock that miners and ranchers have spent decades unearthing skulls the size of bathtubs and vertebrae as thick as dinner plates. The evidence isn't just in the bones. Tooth marks gouged into ammonite shells and the shattered remains of smaller marine reptiles tell a story of relentless predation. Mosasaurus jaws, according to bite force reconstructions, could snap a modern car door in two. Their stomach contents, sometimes preserved as a last meal, show a menu of fish, turtles, and even fellow reptiles. For 160 million years, these apex hunters sat at the top of the food web, their dominance unchallenged by anything short of another mosasaur. Plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs shared the water, but not the same hunting style. Plesiosaurs, with four powerful flippers and necks that could reach over 20 feet, glided through the shallows and open seas alike. Some species, like the massive Elasmosaurus, grew to 85 feet, longer than a semi-truck. Ichthyosaurs, shaped like modern dolphins, were built for speed and pursuit. Their fossils, too, show up in Kansas chalk and Moroccan phosphate, often with embryos preserved inside a sign these creatures gave birth at sea. Isotope analysis of their teeth confirms they hunted at the very top of the food chain, right up until the end. The Kansas Inland Sea and Morocco's Ould Abdoun Basin hold more than just bones. They preserve a record of uninterrupted rule, over a hundred species of marine reptiles, each adapted for a different hunting style, each thriving in the world's most productive waters. These fossils are found in the very last Cretaceous layers, just below the razor-thin iridium boundary. There's no sign of decline, no evidence of starvation or shrinking body size. The jaws, the bones, the stomach contents, all point to a world where marine reptiles were not just surviving, but flourishing. For paleontologists, this evidence is more than impressive. It's incriminating. The ocean floor doesn't lie, these were not struggling survivors, but the undisputed apex predators of their time. The question isn't how they fell behind, but how creatures so perfectly engineered for domination could disappear almost overnight. At the bottom of the world's oceans, the record of extinction is written in layers no thicker than a credit card. When scientists from the International Ocean Discovery Programme split open sediment cores from the Chicxulub crater's peak ring, the evidence was impossible to miss. Below the boundary, the mud is packed with fossil fragments, teeth, bones, and microfossils from a world teeming with marine reptiles. Then, in a layer barely a millimetre thick, everything changes. This is the iridium spike, the chemical fingerprint of an asteroid strike. Iridium is almost absent from normal Earth rocks, but here, it's 30 times the background level. A cosmic calling card pressed into the clay. Sean Gullick and his team documented the moment in ship logs, a hush on deck as the core split revealed the boundary. Above this razor-thin line, the fossils vanish. No more mosasaur teeth, no plesiosaur bones, not even a scrap of ichthyosaur. The sediment above is sterile, 
a silent ocean floor that records a world reset. Deep sea cores from Shatsky Rise and Blake Nose, thousands of miles apart, confirm the same story. The extinction horizon is never more than a few millimetres thick, laid down in a geological blink, one centimetre of mud for every thousand years, but the loss of the marine reptiles fits inside a single year or less. The ocean floor doesn't offer second chances or blurry timelines. Microcrystites and tiny glass spherules, debris from the impact, are packed into the same layer as the iridium. Foraminifera, the plankton that built the food web, collapse at this line too. Below, species diversity is high. Above, it's a wasteland. There's no gradual fade, no drawn out decline. The extinction is immediate and global, locked to the moment the asteroid hit. No land outcrop, no mountain cliff, preserves the event with this precision. Only the ocean floor, accumulating mud grain by grain, can timestamp the disappearance of over a hundred species. The verdict is in the rock itself. The marine reptiles didn't dwindle or adapt. They were gone in an instant. Their reign ended by a layer thinner than a human fingernail. Evolution's masterpiece wiped out and recorded in a forensic stripe of clay. Every mosasaur, plesiosaur, an ichthyosaur was an obligate air breather. Their lungs could hold enough oxygen for maybe 30 minutes, sometimes less if they were on the hunt. No matter how deep they dove, they always had to return to the surface again and again just to survive. After the asteroid struck, the rules changed instantly. Atmospheric models show that within an hour, the surface air above the world's oceans was loaded with sulfuric acid, aerosols, superheated steam and choking clouds of toxic gas. Concentrations of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides spiked to 10 parts per million or more. For a human, that's enough to burn lungs in a single breath. For a 40-foot marine reptile, forced to gulp air every half hour, it was a death sentence. There was no safe window. The toxic haze persisted for hours, in some regions for a full day, even if a mosasaur tried to wait it out underwater, its physiology didn't allow for more than one or two skipped surfacings. The numbers don't lie, a maximum dive interval of 30 minutes, a toxic window lasting six to 12 hours. Survival was mathematically impossible. The first surfacing might burn the lining of the lungs. By the second or third, collapse was inevitable. Some might have made it a little longer bigger bodies, bigger lungs, but the outcome was already sealed by the need to breathe. Fish with their gills didn't face this problem. They stayed underwater, filtering what oxygen remained. Marine reptiles, on the other hand, had evolved for a world where the surface was always safe. When the air itself became poison, evolution's proudest swimmers found themselves trapped in a lethal loop. Millions of years of adaptation, undone by one inescapable requirement. Come up for air or die trying. A 40-foot mosasaur needed to eat more than 500 pounds of meat every single day. That's not an estimate. It's metabolic arithmetic, calculated from bone histology, isotopic signatures, and the sheer size of their skeletons. Mosasaurs and plesiosaurs ran hot, burning calories at rates closer to modern dolphins than to cold-blooded reptiles. Every bite of fish, turtle, or rival reptile fueled a body that never stopped moving. But this energy engine had a catch. It was hardwired to a food web built from the bottom up. When the asteroid hit, the collapse started with plankton. Deep sea sediment cores show the signal in microscopic detail. Below the iridium layer, foraminifera and other planktonic organisms crowd the mud. Above it, they're gone wiped out in a geological instant. With the base of the food web erased, the dominoes fell fast. Small fish and squid lost their primary food source. Larger prey starved or vanished. For apex predators like mos mosasaurs, the ocean turned into an empty buffet line almost overnight. Stable isotope data from the last mosasaur teeth in Morocco and Kansas confirmed there was no warning. Their prey was plentiful right up to the extinction horizon. There's no sign of shrinking body size. 
no evidence of malnutrition, no gradual decline. The fossil record is blunt. These giants were thriving. Then suddenly they weren't. The numbers don't budge. An adult mosasaur's daily caloric demand didn't change, but the food supply did, dropping to zero as the plankton crash rippled upward. Starvation wasn't a slow fade, it was a cliff, and every large marine reptile went over it together. Evolution had built a supercar with no fuel tank, and when the gas ran out, nothing could keep it running. Minutes after the asteroid hit, the world's coastlines were hammered by waves taller than city buildings. Tsunami deposits at the Brazos River in Texas and the La Popa Basin in Mexico preserve a chaos of jumbled fossils, land and shattered shells, all dumped in a single catastrophic backwash. For marine reptiles, these weren't just any waters. Fossil evidence from Kansas and Morocco shows that plesiosaurs and mosasaurs gave birth at sea, not on land. Gravid plesiosaur skeletons, like the poly polycotyla specimen from Kansas, contain fully formed embryos, while clusters of newborn mosasaur bones turn up in offshore phosphate beds. No eggs, no nests, just live birth in the shallows and shelf seas. But those same nursery grounds were the first to be obliterated by the impact tsunamis, wiping out entire generations in a matter of hours. Even survivors faced a second invisible threat. Stable isotope studies from fossil teeth reveal that these reptiles ran hot, body temperatures as high as 42 degrees Celsius, far above the cooling seas around them. After the impact, deep ocean sediment cores record a sudden drop in sea surface temperatures, up to 10 degrees Celsius, almost overnight. For creatures with finely tuned internal thermostats, the ocean flipped from a warm incubator to a cold trap. Their metabolism, built for speed and heat, offered no flexibility. Fish, with slower, adjustable metabolisms, could ride out the chill. Marine reptiles, locked into a high-octane strategy, couldn't. The escape routes closed all at once. Nursery habitats erased by tsunamis. Metabolic systems sabotaged by abrupt cold. In the forensic record of the ocean floor, there's no sign of recovery, no evidence of adaptation. The last embryos fossilized in utero, the last teeth with their elevated temperature signatures, all stop below the iridium line. Evolution's winning streak ended not with a slow fade, but with every exit blocked at once. Fish didn't just survive the asteroid impact, they staged a comeback that rewrote the rules of recovery. While marine reptiles vanished above the iridium line, ichthyoliths, tiny fossil teeth and bone fragments, begin to reappear in ocean floor mud just a few centimetres higher. These microfossils, counted grain by grain in deep sea sediment cores, show that fish populations rebounded to pre-impact levels within about 10,000 years. That's a geological blink, especially compared to the total silence left by mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. The difference comes down to biological backup plans. Fish never needed to surface for air. Gills let them ride out the worst of the toxic atmosphere, safe below the lethal surface. Their bodies ran cooler and slower, burning far less energy per day. Many species could get by on scraps, shrinking their metabolic needs when food was scarce. And while a mosasaur took decades to reach adulthood, most fish could spawn new generations in a single season, flooding the oceans with eggs and larvae as soon as conditions stabilized. Some fish even found shelter in deeper, colder waters where the impact's effects were less severe. Metabolic flexibility gave them another edge. When temperatures dropped, they slowed down and waited. The ocean floor record is clear. Survival wasn't about being the biggest or the fastest. It was about having options. Fish had them. Marine reptiles didn't. Evolution's so-called winners lost because they played a game with no backup strategy. The ichthyolith spike in post-impact mud is the quiet's proof. Flexibility, not dominance is what brings a lineage back from the brink. Over 100 species of marine reptiles disappeared within a single year. Their entire lineage erased between two layers of ocean mud thinner than a credit card. 
The verdict isn't based on guesswork or missing links. It's written in the millimetre-thick extinction horizon, drilled from seabeds off Morocco, Kansas, and Antarctica. Biostratigraphic counts show a thriving diversity of mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, and their kin below the iridium layer. Above it, the fossil record falls silent. No stragglers, no survivors, no gradual fade. The loss is absolute, resolved to annual precision by the world's most meticulous timekeeper, deep sea sedimentation. This wasn't a slow unraveling or the result of a single unlucky trait. It was a mass extinction delivered with surgical selectivity. Over specialization, once the secret to their 160 million year reign became a liability overnight. Every adaptation that made marine reptiles dominant locked them into a dead end. Obligate air breathing, massive caloric needs, thermal precision, and nursery habitats in the crosshairs of disaster. Evolution had built a fleet of race cars for a track that vanished in a day. The same pattern plays out in the modern world. Polar bears, for instance, are apex hunters perfectly tuned to Arctic ice. But as their environment shrinks, specialization becomes a trap, not a triumph. The ocean floor fossil record gives a clear verdict. When conditions change faster than biology can adapt, the most perfected designs are often the first to vanish. In less than a geological blink, just a millimetre thin layer of iridium on the ocean floor, over 100 species of marine reptiles vanished forever. The International Ocean Discovery Programme Expedition 364 core data shows a sharp boundary. Thriving mosasaurs and plesiosaurs below, total absence above. Their evolutionary triumphs, air breathing, giant size, rapid metabolism, became fatal flaws when the asteroid struck. Fossil records from Kansas and Morocco confirm their dominance, but also their vulnerability. While fish survive thanks to gills, smaller size, and flexible metabolisms, marine reptiles had no backup plan. Some details, like the exact duration of surface toxicity, remain under study, but the extinction sequence is clear. The ocean floor preserves this verdict. Specialization without flexibility leads to a dead end. Today, modern apex predators with narrow ecological needs face similar risks. The fossil record's message is simple. In evolution, the greatest mistake is confusing perfection with resilience. 